Welcome back, welcome back. It's a new optimization tutorial. It seems like you guys are really enjoying the videos so far. We've been uploading consistently for six weeks now. In these videos, I like to show you guys the best ways to optimize your PC for max performance in an easy to understand way. I make it simple, so learning about an optimization doesn't feel like you're reading the Oxford Dictionary. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? This Get thing. your ass on, man. And in case you're new here, check out my other video for more bangers. Trust me, they're all gas. And the last thing before we begin this video, I want to give a big thank you to all my subscribers because we officially hit 300 subscribers. I've been grinding and I'm just so happy to have hit this. Thank you to everyone who subscribes, like my videos, drops comments. I really do love you guys. And without further ado, it doesn't matter if you're on a NASA PC or a 2005 dusty laptop you found in your grandma's basement. Let's go ahead and fix your input delay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is join my Discord, link in the description. Once you're in my Discord, head over to the YouTube Tweaks channel here on the left. It's not in here right now, but I'm to put it in here as soon as i upload this video it'll just be like signs fix input delay or fix input lag something like that it'll be the bottom zip here so just download the zip that says fix input lag and then you can close out a discord once you have the file go ahead and extract it with 7-zip and then just put it on your desktop and you have it here go ahead and open it up and then i have everything laid out real easy for us on what we need to do to fix your input delay the first thing we're going to want to check is your usb ports so i put a little picture in here but it's going to be a little bit different for each person's motherboard but basically what you're going to want to do is plug into the usb 3.0 or 3.1 ports on your motherboard the easiest way to tell is just inspect the physical ports on your motherboard. You can check this with software too, but it's easy just to go physically look because it just tells you right there. The SS here stands for super speed and this is super speed 10. Super speed 10 is USB 3.1 and this is USB 3.0. You can see these USB ports are blue. What you want to do is plug your devices into these ports. Some motherboards will have red ports instead of blue. If you have blue, red, and gray ports, usually the red ports are going to be your super speed 10. The blue ports will be your standard USB 3.0 and the gray ports will be USB 2.0. You don't want to plug anything into the USB 2.0 if you care about latency on that device. If you had this exact same setup, just for a reference, where you have four super speed standard 3.0 ports and two 3.1 super speed 10 ports, what I would do is just plug my mouse and keyboard into the super speed 10 ports because these ports are newer, will be a little bit faster for you. Of course, if you have like a brand new PC, nowadays they're just stacking it up with super speed 10. So you might just have like all red ports that all say super speed 10. And if that's the case, then you can just throw things in there like your Tom Brady and just start shooting for fun. And then you can close out of this once you make sure it's in the right USB ports. The next thing we're going to want to do is go to optimize Windows timer. I have a bat in here which is open source and you can right click and click edit. It's just doing simple BCD edits to fix the Windows timing because by default it sucks. If you don't feel comfortable running a bat you can run these individually of course but I just have everything in here so it's real easy for us. What we're going to want to do is go to power run first and then click file and then allow command line and then drag timer fix over power run and then that's going to run it automatically and close and then that'll run it at the highest permissions that way any of these don't error out in case you have like UAC on or anything. The next thing we're going to want to do in the same Windows Timer one is open up Device Manager and then go down to High Precision Event Timer here and then right click it and click Disable Device. Again, this is under System Devices, so if it's collapsed like that, just open it up and then Disable High Precision Event Timer and then scroll down and then Disable System Timer 2. Right click Disable. We're going to make sure System Timer is disabled as well as High Precision Event Timer. The reason we're doing this is because Windows will sometimes try to call on these legacy timers, which can cause delay, FPS drops, stutters. So it's best just to go ahead and disable them and that way windows won't call on these legacy timers and give you any kind of issues so once you're done with that you can close out of this go back again and go to scaling mode open up nvidia control panel you can agree and continue and then go to adjust desktop size and position and make sure your monitor that you're gaming on preferably both but mainly the one you're gaming on is set to no scaling the benefit of this is that there's really just no scaling so the gpu skips scaling work less processing so you get faster frame delivery and that's why you're just going to get smoother input slash less input delay so once you verify your monitor is on no scaling you can go ahead and close out of this for now we're gonna be doing some nvidia stuff in a second again but go ahead and go back one go to refresh rate and then go to display settings go ahead and scroll down and go to advanced display and i'm sure you guys already know this but just make sure your hertz is on the maximum hertz for the monitor you're gaming on of course if you have a 360 hertz monitor but you're playing at 60 hertz your game's still gonna feel like crap so just make sure it's on the maximum hertz there contrary to this though if you have two displays this one can go up to 75 this is my second monitor i'm actually locking this one at 60 if i did have it at 75 it's not gonna make that much of a difference anyway but if you do have two displays 
displays that are like this one that are 360 hertz that's actually going to increase input delay so if you have a second monitor that has a high refresh rate i'd recommend locking it at maybe 120 hertz max ideally while you're gaming if you don't care what the second monitor feels like you can either just unplug it entirely or just keep it at 60 hertz that way it's not going to affect your gaming performance or input delay once you verified your monitors are set up correct you can exit out of this go back one so the next thing we're going to want to do is go to number five nvidia profile so like earlier how we were messing with the nvidia scaling mode we're actually going to apply an nvidia profile entirely so i do have another bat in here which again is open source all it's doing is pulling my nvidia profile from my github that way you don't have to do all these back end settings manually i'm sure you guys are familiar with nvidia profile inspector so it's going to apply all the front end settings you see in nvidia control panel and all the back ones in the nvidia profile inspector too so all we're going to do now is just right click on this and click run as administrator it's going to say applying custom science based profile if you get an error in here that's fine as long as you get this message here that says profile successfully imported and you know it applied successfully and you're good if you didn't get this and something went wrong you may need to turn off uac disable defender or disable smart screen but once you get this screen here that says it's imported successfully you're good you can click ok on this and then you can just close out of this if it doesn't close automatically then what we're going to want to do is just make sure everything applied go to adjust image settings with preview here at the top and then set this to use the advanced 3d image settings here and then click apply and then click yes from here go to manage 3d settings and then you can see these settings are the ones that the script set so these should automatically be off already and then the reason why we check this is because some monitors right here won't take the settings we imported automatically so the monitor technology we want this to be fixed refresh and then the OpenGL rendering GPU just set that to your GPU and then what we're going to do next is preferred refresh rate change this to highest available instead of application control and then scroll down and the last thing we'll do is turn vertical sync to off and then click apply. So those settings should automatically apply for most of you. But in my case, I have a unique monitor. If you guys have like 1440p or 4K monitors, and sometimes those specific settings won't apply automatically. That's why we got to come in here and change them. So just check those and make sure those are set good. Otherwise, everything else will apply automatically for you guys. So you can close out of the NVIDIA control panel now. Go ahead and go back and then go to import power plan. So power plan is honestly one of the biggest things that can affect your latency, input lag, input delay, things like that. I have my custom power plan in here, which again, you can right click and edit it. It's all open source. All it's doing is pulling my power plan from my GitHub. I have a video on how to make this power plan if you want to make it yourself. Although this one's already fully custom made. In that video, I also show benchmarks of my power plan versus other ones. It's the best one on the internet. It clears all the other power plans, has the lowest latency, the max FPS, the best 0.1% lows, best 1% lows. Basically, it's the best power plan for latency, FPS, everything. If you don't feel comfortable using a custom power plan, make sure at minimum you're using ultimate performance or high performance. You just really, really, really want to make sure you're not on power saving or balanced power plan because that's really going to butcher your latency. But once you decide what power plan you want to be on, whether that's ultimate performance or a custom one like mine, then you're good. If you do want to be on mine, then just right click this and click run as administrator. It's going to say importing power plan. It'll automatically close and run. So just type in edit power plan and make sure that your active power plan is set to science power plan. So once you've verified you're on the power plan you want to be, on go ahead and close out of this go back and then go to win 32 prior separation this is priority so what we're doing is setting this to 26 what this value does is it boosts foreground app priority over background tasks so the result of this is better latency and more responsiveness in your games now this is a pretty common tweak i'm sure you guys heard that there's a lot of different values setting this to a value of 26 is generally the best for 99 percent of people and that's why i have this one in here however if you have already experimented with this and you did find that another value was a little better for you and of course you can just keep that one however like I said for like 99% of us we just want to use this value here all you're going to do is double click on this registry tweak click yes and then click ok and then that'll apply that so once you're done with this go ahead and go back one and then go to MSI utility open up MSI utility v3 if for whatever reason you get an error here and it didn't open up, you may want to download MSI Utility from GitHub. But once you have it opened up here, I know there's a lot of things in here and you guys might have a lot less in here than I do, but there's a few key things we're looking for in here. The first one is our GPU. So click on your GPU here and then you see MSI is checked. So you want to make sure MSI is checked just like that and then set the interrupt priority to undefined. A lot of people will say set this to high. It's actually bad. You don't want to be doing that. It's going to mess up your interrupts and actually make your delay significantly worse. So make sure this is on undefined. Make sure MSI mode is checked for your GPU. The next thing we're going to want to do is look for our USB controllers. So it'll say USB. I'm on AMD, but if you're on Intel, it should just say like Intel USB and then the USB version. So like I was saying earlier, the ports we want to be plugging into is USB 3.1 or USB 3. If you see USB 3.2 here, USB 3.2 is only for USB-C. So pretty much nobody is going to be plugging into these USB 3.2 ports. 
because gaming peripherals are still using USB type A and not type C. So these 3.2 ones, you can generally just ignore. This USB 2.1, this is a legacy USB. And like I was saying, we don't really want to use this one anymore. So ideally you guys aren't plugged into this one. And again, like I said earlier, these are usually the gray ports on your motherboard. So if you're in the super speed 10 ports, which is the USB 3.1 ports, like we discussed, then these two are going to be the ones your devices are plugged into. Of course, your motherboard might be a little bit different. You might have more than two. You might have just one. You might not have any if you just have a really old motherboard. It might just say USB 3.0, something like that. But once you find this, what you want to make sure no matter what is make sure they're on undefined. If you set these to high, again, it's going to mess up your interrupts and it's going to make your delay horrible. So just make sure these are on undefined for sure. The one thing that's going to vary per system is if the MSI box is checked. So if your delay feels like crap right now, what I'd recommend is just go ahead and do the opposite of what it's on now. So if you're watching this video and they're both checked and your delay just feels like crap, then uncheck them, do some tests and see what feels better to you guys. It is just going to vary per system if having these checked or not checked is going to be better for you. So just test it out and see. In my case, I'm on Asus. I have a 9800X3D and an X870E. So with that setup, having these checked is actually better for me. It's going to depend on your system though. So like I said, just test it out. So once you have everything set in here, click apply here on the top right. I'd recommend clicking refresh a couple times and then apply again just to make sure it really does apply and make sure these settings don't reset. But once you're done, you can close out of this and then go back. And then the last thing I want to talk about is just an Ana's hardware talk. So you can double click into this folder, but I just have links in here to some gaming peripherals. These aren't sponsored links or anything, but it's just straight up Amazon links to these gaming peripherals. The reason why I wanted to point this out is like, let's just say you're gaming on like a $20 quote unquote gaming mouse from Walmart or something. The click latency on that mouse is probably going to be like 20 milliseconds. So let me break it down for you guys, just so you guys can understand what I'm getting at here. Let's just pretend you have 20 milliseconds between your computer and your monitor. And then your budget gaming mouse has a click latency of 20 milliseconds. You now have 40 milliseconds of input delay and literally half of that input delay is just because of your mouse. So these mice I have in here have a one millisecond click latency. So I'd recommend just looking up your mouse, see what the click latency is, look up your keyboard, see what the latency is if the latency is really high i'd recommend investing in a peripheral that has low latency because at the end of the day you can do all the tweaks you want but if your mouse has a click latency of like 40 then it's just gonna feel like crap no matter what if that makes sense but other than that once you guys are done with the file you did everything in the video you should be good go ahead and reboot your pcs for those settings to apply test it out in game let me know if you guys have any questions or anything in the comments below i'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have if you did like the video i'd really appreciate a like be sure to subscribe to my channel as well check out my other videos i have tons of other optimization videos on my channel already and comment on what you want to see next if you guys want me to do everything for you check out my website signs.net where i do more in-depth optimizations for you i take care of bios windows drivers e bloating everything like that for you guys that way you guys have full peace of mind knowing that you have the best optimizations on the planet the maximum amount of fps your computer can have and the lowest amount of input delay your computer can have as well other than that guys i hope you guys have a great rest of your day peace